Hey, Laura. Hi, Pete. Thank so you nice so much. It's nice chatting with you. Yeah, yeah, really nice. Um, thank you so much for giving us time. Really appreciate it. Of course, it's a pleasure. So um, let's jump in and kick off with your diabetes story. Yeah, um, well, it has uh, quite a few up and, up and downs, um, as I'm sure everyone's story has. Um, so I was uh, diagnosed in 2007, so like 14 years ago. And um, I was just 11 at that time. Um, it was my last year in primary school. And so I was off to go to high school the next year. And so my endo at the time was really adamant that I should um, take on control, like everything from, you know, measuring my blood sugar to um, taking my insulin. So my parents, um, yeah, they weren't really involved um, at yeah. the time. And, and they also, like they have never really been involved because, you know, the, the end was uh, really pushing for my independence. Um, yeah. It's it's quite usual in Switzerland. Like kids are very independent here in Switzerland. So, yeah. you know, it was it was a uh, just normal thing for them. Um, but for me, like I'm, I'm sure everyone knows, like being diagnosed with diabetes is really hard. It's it's a difficult disease. Um, it's you know, it's hard to wrap your head around. Um, and as an 11 year old, it's, you know, you have all this weight on your shoulders, um, literally keeping you alive 24 seven. And like the burden kind of, you know, it kind of shaped my, my journey through the past 14 years. Um, I, I don't think I was ever in denial. Um, I was managing, you know, just fine. Um, but I could have done way better. Um, and I know the teenage years are always difficult um, for everyone. Um, I, yeah, I'm an, I mean, I was all right. My, my A1C, I don't think it never went like above 7.5, even during yeah. my teenage years. Um, but I was having lots of highs and lots of lows. So I think that was kind of like the lows were bringing down my A1C. Yeah, yeah. Time and um, range wouldn't have been that talked about yeah. back then. No, I, di I didn't even have a CGM. Like the first, I think, um, maybe eight years of my diagnosis, I, I just pricked my finger. Mm. I could, like I can not imagine doing this now, yeah, of no, course. No, no. Um, but yeah, that was, I was just MDI and pricking my finger yeah. um, for the longest time. And, you know, it was, it was, um, it was kind of hard for me as a, just as a teenage, uh, as a teenager, because my parents, of course, they wanted me to have tighter control um, and they wanted to help. Yeah. But um, because of, because the endo had um, told me that I was the one responsible, responsible for my diabetes, I felt like I couldn't let them help me. Yeah. So I was, you know, I felt the pressure of managing diabetes, of not letting anyone help me. I didn't really know anyone with type one at the time. And so it was a really isolating and, and a difficult time for me. Um, but then luckily I, um, I found the diabetes online community. Mm. Um, and like, I can, I can never say how it changed my life. Um, mm it's it was really really life-changing like not on not only you know meeting other people with type one learning from other people mm. um i you know i learned about cgms i learned about mm. um mm. pumps and pre bolusing and looping even yeah so you know it's it, it just opened my mind to to this world of diabetes that i didn't know before because i I was completely isolated from anything related to diabetes. I just didn't want it. You know, I was one of those uh, people who didn't want to go to camp or like I didn't want to be identified with type one. Yeah. Um, and I think well, many people can relate to that feeling. That's flipped around a lot now for you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> the proud yes. advocate that you are. <laughs> yes, indeed. I'm. Um, 
yeah I don't know if if um if someone had told me like seven years ago you're gonna be working like within the diabetes space you're so much of your identity will be tied to type one um I would have said no you're crazy like what did you drink or what did you smoke because that's Mm -hmm. not possible um but it is and I I'm so glad that I was able to to turn it around because it has improved my life so much and like just my my overall happiness my I mean my health um my mental health as well um, my relationship with my parents Mm. like everything has changed um for the better so I'm really glad I I'm where I am right now there's plenty of um negative uh what's what's the reinforcement or there's plenty of like negative commentary about social media right out there in terms of like it's negative impacts on us day to day on people who are on social media day to day but actually like i think that the diabetes community and access to the support and the networks that we can get through social media is it is pretty amazing, actually, um, the ability to connect with people and just kind of feel like you're part of something because, you know, mm-hmm. most diabetics don't necessarily know other diabetics. Um, mm-hmm. And it's, it's just a nice way to be able to kind of dip in and out to a community and you don't have to necessarily contribute, but actually just, you know, knowing you can go and hear about what people are up mm-hmm. to and learn about like new technologies and so forth. It's, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. yeah I agree I completely agree um and sometimes I feel silly you know um telling other people who are not involved with the diabetes online community Mm. that I found so many valuable information on on Instagram um like people look at me like um like Instagram are you sure is it trustworthy (laughs) yeah um but people don't realize the you know, the wealth of information of valuable and good information available, like on social media, as you said, um, or even just blogs, um, or the internet generally, or podcasts even. Yeah. Um, So it's, yeah, I think it can be, I mean, I'm sure it can be hard for people, social media can have negative effects. Within the diabetes online community, it's also very talked about, you know, only showing like the good graphs or um, yeah. like only talking about the positive sides of, of type one. Mm-hmm. There's always a negative, but I feel like the positive side of being part of the diabetes online community yeah. outweighs the negative sides by so much. Yeah. And it's, I'm, it's also something I'm really passionate about because I... I don't understand why my endos have never really pushed me to, you know, look for a connection with other type ones. Um, There's just not a, I I don't think the endos um, or the healthcare providers really like understand the the value of community or at least not yet. So it's something I really want to, you know, to, to speak up about and, um, it's I'm really passionate about it yeah look I kind of understand I mean I I I really feel for the medical community in general right I'm a massive advocate for our healthcare community and and providers um because I think that they're like underappreciated sometimes and I think that, Mm -hmm. that and the world has moved so rapidly um in a, in a way which is taking control away from them, which is a good thing. Like it's a good thing the way that information is dispersed and available now. And, you know, once upon a time, what your doctor said was the be all and end all, right? But actually now, mm-hmm. I, I don't know about you, I assume you probably do, but you know, I certainly educate my doctor and it's hard. It's hard going mm-hmm. to your doctor knowing a bit more than them because <laughs> they, they want to be seen as the expert. And I think when it comes to, you know, social networks, um, communities, social media. I think that there's not a lot of science out there necessarily in the benefits. So maybe there hasn't been a lot of mm-hmm. studies done to show the actual you know, good and bad parts of social media. And certainly there would be 
plenty of negatives, right? Like I think we do have to be careful about anecdotal information and you know whether it's accurate or not. And I think we've mm-hmm. seen that with COVID, right? We've seen the well, the misuse of social media and the anecdotal mm-hmm. information that is now, you know, like Joe Rogan, right? A great, great example mm-hmm. of someone who's, you know, it's anecdotal. He's, 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 mm-hmm. he, he did one thing, he didn't get sick. And so now everyone thinks that's the right thing to do. And that's, mm-hmm. yeah, that's why people are pulling their music from Spotify, right? But um, <laughs> I think that's where doctors probably, you know, doctors, and, and this is a good thing, right? They want to talk about evidence. And they want to give you, they want to, that's really all they want to talk about, right? Um, mm-hmm. So I can kind of understand where they're coming from. But I do think, yeah, there's, and, and I think we'll touch on looping soon, right? Looping is an example of sort of like the diabetes community moving ahead of healthcare mm-hmm. providers in us, healthcare providers and, and, and you know, people who make uh, the devices and the medicines that we, we use. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, it's, um, I, you mentioned that healthcare providers are um, often like underappreciated. Um, I, I do feel the same way. I think it's re- it's a really hard job. Like I cannot imagine um, being in charge of managing um, the diabetes for so many type ones or even type twos or people with gestational diabetes. Like it's yeah. a really hard job. I I absolutely like I respect them for it and. I have seen with my own endos how much they care about their patients. And, um, you know, sometimes we speak about, um, uh, like specifically about looping for um, other patients who may be having a difficult time managing on their own, like diabetes Mm. on their own. Um, And I see how, you know, how it hurts them um, to know that they have a patient that is struggling so much. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I like doctors are doing an amazing job. I think the only like there's a gap between, you know, what they learn um, and what they know about, and mm-hmm. what we as patients need in order to live a full and healthy life. Mm-hmm. And it's just a gap in I think in knowledge mainly like. In training, I think it's their training. It's, yeah, yeah. Component. I mean, they don't get, they actually don't get um, a lot of training in like interpersonal skills or in like coaching type dynamics or in a more holistic view, right? They're, they're, they're trained to be experts in science. And, mm-hmm. and again, a lot of the stuff, a lot of this stuff is, is less sciencey. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree it's it's a really hard um field you know it's because Mm. um also i feel like um whenever um whenever we talk of of somebody's management um you know the the management is really tied up with their way of living personality how they feel about diabetes so it it gets really personal really quickly um and i'm sure it's also a reason why um you know online um there can be many conflicts about you know the way of eating or mm-hmm. insulin dosing like it can escalate really quickly um so it's a it's a tight rope to walk yeah, yeah absolutely. I guess that's the right way to say it yeah yeah so you so this is kind of in your sweet spot in a sense isn't it because you're now sort of studying in in this general area do you want to um give us a little Mm -hmm. bit of uh insight into what you're working on at the moment and kind of where your what your plans are yeah sure um so as i mentioned the more i i got into the diabetes community and also advocacy advocacy work um massive shout out to ddoc voices for enabling me to get into this advocacy um Mm. network um i you know i realized how much drive I have for this topic, for the diabetes space in general. Um, And so I was originally working in event management for a festival, Mm -hmm. Um, so something completely different, but I I felt like it wasn't the right thing for me. So I, um, I decided to take the plunge and go for it and um, 
you know, try and, and, and um, work my way towards um, hopefully one day working in the diabetes space and, and having an impact on, on lives of, of people li living with diabetes. Um, but of course, I only had my own experience as a patient. And I mean, I could have looked for another job, but you know, it's, it's hard. And I feel like there was a part missing from my, um, like my, my rucksack of my backpack. Um, yeah. It was, it wasn't as full as it could have been. So um, I decided to pursue a master's in health sciences um, to, you know, gain some knowledge on the healthcare system itself um, and complement it um, with my own experience of navigating the healthcare system. So I have both perspectives. Um, that's really the, the goal of this um, master's degree so that I can, you know, when, I, when I'm done with it, I can um, enter the healthcare system, the healthcare mm. world yeah. um, with both perspectives and hopefully that will help, you know, bridge the gap as we were saying earlier. Yeah. Um, so that's something I'm, um, I'm really looking forward to do. And I think the masters I chose, um, is, is a really good, um, starting point because it's like an intro 101 into healthcare and it covers so many different topics, um, you know, from public health to clinical trials to, um, gosh, what else? to like some medical stuff even. Yeah. Um, it's a really broad master's. So typically people who do that master's can work anywhere in the healthcare setting. So, yeah. you know, pharma, hospitals, yeah. um, patient organizations. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I feel like that's a good starting point for me. And also my own experience, of course, is, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's something I, I carry with me and I, I'm sure it will help um, in the future if, um, if and when I work in somewhere in the diabetes space, but I'm not sure yet where. I truly really commend all this. As I listen to you, there's two questions that pop into my mind. One is actually just around um, uh, the, I'll, actually I'll ask them in order. Um, so, I'm interested in kind of like what what you've picked up already because I know I noticed that you, there's a couple of insights that I've noticed that have come from some of the stuff you've posted um but also I'm also curious once you've answered that one I want you to talk about like whether you ever get any burnout with, with regards to just being so immersed in the world of diabetes because I do like I sometimes mm -hmm. is like I don't want to hear the word diabetes for a day please I don't want I get like <laughs> I just get like over it. Um, but yeah, do you talk, talk about what you've picked up so far through the studies. Um, ooh, that's a good question. Um, you know, it's really hard to pinpoint exactly um, what I've picked up or what um, has, struck the, make, has struck me the most. Mm. I think it's um, maybe the complexity of healthcare and how much it revolves around money in the end um although everyone says i mean yes it's obvious i know <laughs> uh, but, yeah. you know hearing it like or seeing it in your lecture slides and like understanding how it works and mm -hmm. how money is tied up at every single level and every single decision yeah. is it's something that it hits differently yeah. Um, I, I, I wasn't as aware of it as I, as I am now. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sure, yeah, the complexity is one, one side, um, like the importance of money and also the importance of good evidence as, as we were talking about earlier. Something has to be, like it cannot be anecdotal information. It has to be um, like proven to be effective um, or cost effective in order to be implemented into guidelines, for example. So like the way of thinking and, and framing, I, mean, I don't know if framing is the right word, but like the way of thinking um, of healthcare providers, but also um, people involved in 
you know, policy work and, um, and just, um, you know, not only the doctors and, and nurses and, and hospital staff, but, you know, all the other people involved in healthcare, like insurances, um, just understanding the, um, the different incentives um, different stakeholders have and just, um, yeah, how, how difficult it can be to find a good solution, even when, you know, a good solution um, may be very obvious to someone who is not as deeply involved or doesn't know that much about healthcare. Um, that is certainly something I've, I've learned. And also I have learned quite a lot about public health um, and what public health can achieve. And I have to say, I really, really like that field. So if I wasn't doing something within the diabetes space, I would definitely go into public health. It's super fascinating. Yeah, you're, I mean, it's the, the whole money and healthcare thing is like, it's just a never ending kind of, you, well, you can't, you can't um, unlink them, right? Like you, you need mm -hmm. money to, to drive healthcare. And I think that like, you can definitely like there's so many examples of like 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 the US healthcare system, right? Where you know the 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 capitalistic nature of the culture means that they've got one of the most inefficient healthcare systems in the world, mm -hmm. right? Like on a on a per person um spending. It's yeah. and it's ridiculous, right? It's 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 mm -hmm. and it's so obvious. And you think, well, why isn't it? But it's so like it's culturally ingrained, right? This kind of the way that healthcare is delivered and the whole insurance system. Um, and so you know, I think you can look at systems. I don't, I don't know much about the Swiss system. You can look at the NHS as kind of the opposite end, right? Where this big pools of money are just given and healthcare is delivered mm -hmm. and they kind of got to use what they've got uh, to deliver it, but people are looked after basically. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, kind of putting the people first. And Australia is a little bit more on that side um, than we are on the US side. Um, but certainly in Australia and the UK, as a as a patient, you or as a as a resident, you feel you feel kind of safe because you know that you're going to be looked after, right? So you're mm -hmm. you know very lucky, um, and you don't feel like you know money is a problem, right? When it comes to needing healthcare, and mm -hmm. you know it's terrible to think that in you know, and, and I think like sparing of insulin, right, or um, access to insulin. Um, insulin affordability is a prime example in the US of like, yeah. you know, we like we, Australia, all, you know, all, all countries buy their insulin from the same manufacturers. Yeah, we just, you know, in Australia, we just negotiate and say, well, we're not paying that much, you know, yeah. and, and, and we kind of, we put our foot down and, and, sh and make sure that like the right thing is done by the system and by patients um so yeah it is it's a it's a fascinating one and I, and I do think that you know I think that moving into that area you there's there are so many problems to be solved still in 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 across the board right you can mm -hmm. you can you can take your take your pick of problems that you want to go and focus on and that's a pretty exciting prospect right to think that you can kind of navigate your way through and find problems in the healthcare system that you might want to focus on and, and, and work towards. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you also asked about burnout, yeah. being immersed yeah. in the diabetes space all the time. Um, I, I, that was something, that was the one thing that was holding me back um, before I decided to actually pursue this, um, this career. Yeah. Yeah. This work. Um, I, but in the end, um, I thought to myself, I would rather really enjoy my work most of the time yeah. and feel burnout sometimes yeah. rather than doing something that I'm not really passionate about and just never burn out or maybe even burn out still because maybe I have to do something that I'm not passionate about. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I, I think I will have to be mindful of my own like resources and get very good at boundary setting because I can, I can already tell sometimes when I'm, you know, scrolling through social media, yeah. I feel like um, I feel this obligation to like 
um, help people and to um, to do my part in, you know, if someone has a question that I could answer because I know the answer, yeah. I feel like you should answer that, that question. Um, but then, you know, if I answer that question, I could also answer so many other questions or, mm. you know, give my my own experience of something if someone on social media is asking for feedback about something and i i feel burned out really quickly um when i you know when i realize how much there is to do and like how little time i can actually spend on mm. <laughs> actually helping people mm. um so you know sometimes i just need to tell myself um Laura, you can't help everyone. Like mm. you just do your stuff, you stay on track. Um, mm. You cannot just, you know, respond to every question on social media or comment on something um, to help another person. Um, totally. That's definitely something I, I will need to be very mindful of. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to you've got to fill up your own cup, I suppose, haven't you? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I actually find sometimes that I can't even go on, like some days I'm like, I just can't even look at the, not just the patch Instagram. I just, I'm like, <laughs> I do it. Cause you know, when I scroll down, it's just, it's just people talking about their diabetes and it's like, oh God, oh God, diabetes, more diabetes. Yeah. Um, so I totally get that. Um, earlier we touched on, um, we were talking about healthcare providers and sort of how certain areas move ahead or you know, move not always in line with what's being advocated for or taught in the healthcare sector and, and looping is a really good example of that um and actually i don't think i i think it, i'm trying to think when i first i think it was actually probably attd in madrid when i first heard the term i can't remember mm -hmm. if it was you or whatever it was yeah i think we were um in that bar like eating yeah. nachos or something and we we're just i had just met you for the first time i think yeah um and we were talking about looping if i remember yeah and i don't yeah. i don't know if I, I think that might have been like one of the very first times that it came up and i i was fascinated i, I think it's it's so fantastic to think about a community that's talking amongst itself to try and figure out solutions to this stuff so mm -hmm um do you want to tell us what what is looping <laughs> and what is sure. a looper because you're a looper right <laughs> yeah i'm a looper but i wouldn't say i'm an expert looper i'm i'm just a very basic average looper um so in a nutshell looping is looping with a um like a small l because there's a difference between like loop with capital L and looping. Um, so basically looping means um, it goes back to hybrid closed loops, right? Um, so it means that uh, your insulin dosing gets adjusted by an algorithm um, automatically based on your CGM data. So mm -hmm. in a nutshell, if your blood sugar goes up, um, the algorithm will give you more insulin. If your blood sugar, blood sugar is going down, it will withhold insulin. That's like the basic principle of looping. Um, now, there are different ways to loop, different um, sort of programs or apps. Um, and one of them, which is the one I use, is called Loop with a capital L. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the iOS version of like it's the iOS version of looping. So mm -hmm. you can loop with iPhones. Um, mm -hmm. There are other versions like um, Android APS, um, Open APS, which are Android based. Um, and they also work with different pumps. So mm -hmm. depending on which pump you have and which CGM, you can kind of choose um, which program you want to use. But, you know, they all work um, pretty much the same. There are some technical um, differences, uh, but you know, the, the concept is, is the same. Mm. And as you said, it's, it's um, you know, it's do it yourself. It's something, 
it's a patient driven innovation. So it, um, it was created by amazing people um, who, you know, the story is kind of complex and it goes over um, many years, but essentially these people kind of met online and they created this solution. Um, every, everyone, you know, had different skills that they brought mm. to the table and they ended up with an algorithm or many algorithms mm -hmm. um, as well as you know instructions for the people who want to loop on how to build their own algorithm and all kinds of resources and um, even like Facebook groups for troubleshooting and and help when someone has a problem mm -hmm. you know um, it's it's uh, it's an amazing community um, all the developers are like really smart and kind people they have put so much work and effort into mm. creating this solution and i think there are I, I i don't think there are exact numbers but i'm i'm guessing probably more than 10,000 people on the like in the world mm -hmm. using um i'm not sure if loop like the loop i use mm. or just looping generally um, but yeah, anyways, it's a, it's a really, you know, there are many people who are, who are loopers and I think the numbers is, are going, um, up mm. in recent years. Um, okay. So really the, the core of looping is, is the software is an algorithm that, um, is able to determine an insulin dose. Mm -hmm. which is delivered by a pump a pump yeah um is how is the is the pump the is, so you have to manually adjust the pump based on the algorithm's output or is the no. pump adjusted automatically it's adjusted automatically so you have to input certain um parameters uh like settings like yeah. uh, basal rate, insulin to carb ratio, insulin sensitivity, um, yeah, so like and some other settings. insulin sensitivity, is that like a one to 10 rating or something like that, is it? Uh, no, ins insulin sensitivity is actually the toughest setting to get right, in my opinion. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, you know, it can be like, depending on whether you're a kid or like a, an adult, it can vary like by a lot totally. um, it's, it, it, yeah it, it can be it can be on like exercise or i mean stress or sure i mean yeah so, like so many factors yeah sure i mean you know the thing is these settings are are like a starting point for the algorithm the mm. algorithm changes um you know from like every five minutes it reevaluates mm. what it's doing mm. so whenever you get a new cgm data point Mm -hmm. The algorithm um, like calculates where your blood sugar is headed. Mm. And then depending on the prediction, it will either do nothing because it's mm. fine or it will give you insulin or withhold insulin. Um, so, you know, even if your settings aren't like perfectly mm. set, um, the algorithm can, it can like steer you or keep you within a certain range. How it's, is the um, yeah. information from the software delivered to the pump and you know, integrated or interpreted by the pump? Mm -hmm. It's actually, um, it's through a device called, um, so the original device was called Riley Link because the guy who developed it um, has a daughter with type mm -hmm. one called Riley. And it's basically, so this is, this is mine. This is the orange link, yeah, which is a different that. kind of um, yeah. of right link, but the the concept is the same. It basically links my pump to my phone because the pump, like I use Omnipod, and the pump, um, I think it speaks like speaks in radio frequency, and my phone obviously doesn't do that. It speaks in Bluetooth. Mm. So this is like a little translator for okay. um, radio frequency and Bluetooth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So whenever the like my Dexcom sends the data to my phone, uh -huh. the phone sends it to the Loop app, 
on my yeah. phone. Yeah. The algorithm does its thing. It calculates where my blood sugar is headed. And yeah. then if let's say the algorithm wants to give me some insulin, the phone will actually send the command to the Riley link and the Riley link will send it to my pump. And then my pump will execute the and command. So is that, there's an element of hacking here. Like, what, where, 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 what's the what are, com <laughs> what are companies? What are the um, Omnipods of the world uh, and the Medtronics of the world? Um, what are, what's their view? Have you, have you, have, have you got, have you got feedback from them? Have you had a conversation with them? Was anyone in the community talking to them? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, they're not happy about it. Um, I would say they. Um, yeah they're not happy about it but um just recently um omnipod like insulet's ceo um mm. shacy petrovich she um she talked openly about the do-it-yourself mm. um community and um you know she was very open and um and had um what's the word she like very positive feedback mm -hmm. um, and sh she mentioned that um, if it wasn't for the do-it-yourself community insulate wouldn't be where they are today with mm -hmm. their algorithm mm. you know the omnipod 5 that just came out yeah, yeah. Uh, well that just was uh, fda approved yeah um because she she said that there was so much that they could learn from the do-it-yourself community you know and it really um accelerated the development so you know i think officially the companies are you know maybe obliged to say that they don't agree yeah but i think unofficially they are i'm sure they, they have learned a lot from yeah. the with yourself community so you know it's a difficult relationship um but i would say like i i'm not openly you know, advertising yeah. um, with insulate that I'm looping. Um, it's, mm -hmm. I think they know, they probably know, but yeah, it's yeah. kind of, I mean, it is a form of, of hacking if you think about it. So yeah, and I said, well, I don't know. I, I don't know whether it would be possible for them to block this activity uh, or not. Um, I know with, say the Libre, there's, you know, a number of attachments out there that are available now. And again, not endorsed by Abbott and I'm sure they would be upset um, by the existence of these um, accessories. Um, but in reality, I think these accessories are just, I think in a similar situation, they're just um, interpreting um, it's either Bluetooth or radio waves um, mm -hmm. and they're, you know, they're, basically able to function off of that. So I, su I suppose they, that, that could be difficult to block even if a company, want, company mm -hmm. wanted to. Yeah. Um, yeah. So do you, can you use, can you loop with any CGM? Um, mm, you do loop with- Yes and no, it depends on which library? loop, uh, on which loop you, like which um, program okay. you use. So gotcha. with loop, like the iOS loop, um, I think it's only the Dexcom okay. and then pump wise, you can loop with the Omnipod, like the old arrows pods, not the dash pods mm -hmm. and also some old Medtronic pumps. Um, okay. but there are other like open APS and Android APS. They also work with like the Dana pump, um, the dash pods even so, and, and also the freestyle Libre. Um, okay. But it has to be with, like, with the attachment with the meow meow. I guess it's called. Yeah, meow meow. I think there's one called Bubble, um, mm -hmm. and there's one called Night Rider. I believe. Ah, yes, right. There's the three yeah. that I'm aware. Of. There may be others out there, because I think actually in reality, and, and you know, I think with the Libre as well. I haven't got a patch on. How dare I? Um, but, <laughs> but um. I think, I mean, these, they're, they're, I mean, they're in, in reality, they're quite basic. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I say that in, in the sense, like the raw materials and, and 
you know, the function and the technology, it, it's all pretty, you know, it's not like they're breaking any boundaries with that. I mean, I think that the concept of getting, I suppose, the, um, the glucose interacting with the enzyme and then converting that into a message, that part is probably the unique part. But now once that's discovered and mm-hmm. then it's just using, you know, Bluetooth technology, I think it's really easy for development to happen and for accessories to build and for all sorts of different um, and unique kind of like mm-hmm. uh, solutions to pop out of um, this because it's mm-hmm. they're cheap, right? They actually would be cheap. I, my guess, and I, I don't know, but my guess is that it might a Libre, a single Libre might cost Abbott like a couple of dollars, mm. you know, yeah. and in a pure raw material I'm sure mm-hmm. there's Abbott people listening, or I'm sure there will be Abbott people <laughs> listening, and they'll give me a call and then correct me, please. Um, but um, but my guess is it's probably a couple of bucks. I, I wouldn't be any more than yeah. five bucks, I reckon, for them to to take one of these off of a machine and put it in a box, um, especially with the scale that mm-hmm. they've got now. But I guess what what we're paying for is the the time, the research, and the development, and mm-hmm. their marketing, and so on and so forth, and the, and the ongoing research and development as well. But yeah, um, I don't remember where I was going with any of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to touch on, um, on on some of the advantages or maybe also disadvantages of, of Loop, if you don't mind. Mm. Um, because it's um, like for me, it was it was really, really um, life changing. And I, I would never, never go back to, you know, just regular pumping without an algorithm. Um, So for me, one of the main advantages was um, uninterrupted sleep. Um, I used to wake up a couple of times a week um, during the night because Mm. of a high blood sugar or low blood sugar. And um, with loop, I, you know, I can be sure whatever my blood sugar does throughout the night, loop will take care of it and Mm. I will not have to wake up and I will always wake up like within five or six uh, millimoles. Mm -hmm. So like perfectly in range. Mm. Um, And it has made a huge difference on my life, like actually feeling rested and Mm -hmm. not like I'm always chasing blood sugars during the night is, Mm. I can definitely recommend that. Um, But um, I like Loop has also taken away like the constant thinking and worrying about blood sugars Mm -hmm. like right now I'm speaking to you and I had just had breakfast and you know my blood sugar was going a bit up but I didn't do anything and now I can see like on my computer I can see that loop has um, stopped the spike and it's probably now it will go down as soon as we finish speaking so you know I haven't had to do anything like I, I just bolus for breakfast and Mm. I just let it ride Mm. and I can do that so often throughout the day it's like sometimes I don't I may look at my number on on my apple watch but I don't really have to do that much it's you know it just puts diabetes in the background and I don't have to give up good control um, or time and range for my diabetes to move to the background so that's for me that's that's a huge thing when you say you had bolus for breakfast, does that mean, what is what, I mean, I, I know what a bolus is, right? But is that with a, a pen or did you bolus? How, how did you bolus when you had breakfast? Um, so basically you can just enter the carbs um, in your app okay. and then you can say- In the whether, loop app? In the loop app, yeah. Loop app, okay, it's, yeah. Like, it's, it's just a regular app. Um, and you can just uh, tell the app, do you think those are carbs that are going to hit fast, like within two hours or yeah. like regular um, carbs is usually three hours. Um, stuff like pizza or French fries is, is usually like four hour absorption time because it's, it's a bit longer because of the fat mm-hmm. and the high carb. Um, and then you just enter the carbs. Um, you basically hit okay. And um, you get a like, the, the app calculates your bolus dose. Um, you just administer dose and that's it. And then, you know, you either wait a bit or you eat. Um, it right does away. sound very appealing. It really does sound very appealing. I think I, 
the reason I kind of don't look too much more into it personally is just that again, kind of back to that thing before, is like I don't want to spend a lot of time thinking about um, like it just feels like it's an extra thing to, in my life that's you know um, that's why I don't have a pump as well. I really just kind of I'm a I guess I'm a minimalist in, in some sense in that I. <laughs> And you know, my my HPMC is not too bad. Um, I don't you know don't have any sleep issues. But I, and I suppose it's, it is a very personal thing. But that for me is just really just wanting to minimise the things in my life that are diabetes related. And that's why I don't have mm-hmm. a pump. But um, mm-hmm. does it? Do you find it? Is it? Is it? Does it get complicated? Does it add an extra layer of? I don't know, things that you have to do or think about it. You have to carry an extra thing around with you. I mean, does that Mm -hmm. stuff matter or or after a while it just becomes part of your life? Um, You know, it can be, I won't lie. It, it, it certainly is a bit more complicated than just um, MDI using Mm. MDI because Mm. there is a technical side where um, you have to build the app on your phone because it's do it yourself. So, Mm. um, you have to build it so that only you can be responsible for should anything ever mm. happen. Mm. Um, that's, you know, that's the, the reason why it's a do-it-yourself, why you can't just download it from, like, from the app store. Um, and so what, that's so that, a liability thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah correct. It's, it's so that the developers um, yeah, are not held uh, responsible for, you know, any yeah, sure. that makes total sense. things that might happen. Right. Um, so, I'm, I'm, yeah, I mean, you have to get um, used to it. You have to, like, build it on your phone. Um, there are certain, like, technical requirements, like, um, you know, iOS version, Mac OS version. You know, there are certain things you have to pay attention to. Mm. And it's, in the end, it's do-it-yourself, so you can... There may be errors in the, you know, in the app, or uh, maybe con- sometimes connection issues when you change. I don't know a transmitter, and you forget to change the um, the transmitter number in in the app. You know, yeah. but in the end, at least for me, and I think for the majority of loopers, it's it's so worth it mm. because. Um, it actually frees up time and mm-hmm. brain space. Mm-hmm. Um, like it's difficult to put into words, but it's like the burden is not on me primarily. I have to think because I, I want to have really tight control. And mm-hmm. I, I did have tight control before switching to loop. So my A1C hasn't really changed that much. But what has changed is how often I pick up, like in this case, my phone. But prior to that, it was the PDM from Omnipod. Mm -hmm. How often I pick it up to make adjustments. Um, That is a major thing Um, for me that has gone down. And for me, it's just a thousand percent worth it. I like I I could never go back to, you know, just um, just shooting up some insulin and just let it ride because you know our pan like a normal functioning pancreas is you know it's always adjusting yeah it's it's always on top of things so i think it i, I guess it's kind of difficult to see how like one set basil um for the entire day and like one dose for insulin will take care of the blood sugars mm. as well as like a pump um, yeah. or a pancreas that adjusts continuously. Yeah. Um, yeah. Look, it is pretty, it is pretty exciting to think that you, you could probably be a bit more relaxed with your diet um, knowing that you've got an algorithm that is delivering insulin in a more tailored fashion. Like that's, mm-hmm. well, you know, and, and, you know, I guess it's, it's the appeal of, not having as many highs and lows, right? Um, do you still have hypos? Mm-hmm. Um, almost none, wow. like less than one percent. Wow. So, like, yeah, not one a week. Like, I mean, like, true hypos, probably, like, 
one every like two weeks maybe yeah um i do of course i do drop but i um i'm very insulin sensitive so whenever i have even just a little bit of insulin on board and i you know i i walk around or maybe i i have to go grocery shopping or something yeah. i can drop very easily but the cool thing about loop is that whenever it predicts my blood sugar dropping mm -hmm. it will um hold back insulin um so i don't have to take in as many carbs because mm -hmm. i just have to you know to get it mm. up but yeah. just a couple of carbs are enough because I don't have the, the whole, um, I, had, I don't have so much insulin on board because Loop has already been taking it back. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah. And I so think whenever you're, if you're, whenever you're managing your diabetes so well that you're in a tight range all the time, the risks of a hypos are higher because just being yeah. in that little tight range means that you're more likely to, to go underneath occasionally. And I think that that's just a yeah. reality that you have to accept. I think if, uh, I was I was running quite high recently for quite a while, and then I I just realized I had to be more aggressive with my um with my dosing, and uh, mm -hmm. and the reality was I had a few more hypos uh, because of that, and like I think that's you kind of almost have to it's a trade off, right? You're you're trading off you know being high and having a an a a one c of over eight or something for having you know a couple more hypos, um, which is just a reality. Yeah, I think if. Um... Definitely, it's it's really hard to to get it down and and stay in that range um, without overdoing it, um, and you know being aggressive enough with insulin to keep it in the range, um, but then know when to step back and mm. and just um, like not give more insulin. Um, that's it's a tight rope. Walk. it's a fascinating subject actually and i and i'm you know it's i'm kind of it's i'm even though i'm not a looper i'm very proud of the i'm proud of the i'm proud that it exists i'm proud that the community exists and i'm proud that people are out there that there are people out there um working on this stuff and there's an element of a significant element of altruism in it um mm -hmm. a, a community kind of supporting itself um and that stuff's fantastic really really mm -hmm. cool um yeah. Thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, Pete. It was really yeah. a pleasure talking to you and also seeing you for like the first time in two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really nice to catch up. Um, I think the looping stuff is really like it's it's a it's a topic that I've been keen to put on the website for a while. I, I'm it's a I just think it's something that there should be awareness of whether people want to get in the mm -hmm. path or not. I think just having the information there. So people can know that it's a possibility. I think that's quite important. Mm -hmm. Sorry, mm -hmm. Omnipod and, and so on. Um, <laughs> but, but, um, well, yeah, if look, people want to learn more about looping, they can go to um, uh, to the website. It's called um, loopdocs.org. Um, wait, let me check one second because I always forget. Yeah, it's .org. Um, so loopdocs, like as in documents, D-O-C-S dot org. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's it's a super um and is that just maintained website. by by individuals in the community? Yeah, by the developers okay. of Loop. And you can just you can check it out, you can see um which devices you need, like what are the steps. Um I really recommend reading a lot before taking the plunge because it is a big project and it's yeah. like it's not something you can just do and just set it aside and it will do it, its thing. You need yeah. to be, you know, you still need to bolus, you need to pre-bolus, you need to, you know, pay attention to certain things that may change your insulin sensitivity, as you, as you mentioned, like stress or even periods for women. Um, but it's really worth it. And also there is a Facebook group called Looped. So mm. Loop ED. Mm -hmm. um that's really like the main um like meeting point for mm -hmm. the entire looper community online and if you're just curious about looping you can just join the group and like scroll through the messages and the posts and just look at you know look at what loopers um are saying and doing and um just 
take a sneak peek. That's great, Laura. Thank you so much for that information. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Pete.